Auto Land Part 1. Considerations. Autoland Overview Before start talking about the Autoland, it is important to highlight that company policies may dictate specific restrictions and limitations concerning low visibility operations, including the use of the Autoland. This video will show you an example of the considerations you may make in case you are planning a low visibility approach. Captain, I just received the latest weather report. Dubai now is under low visibility operation, ILS runway 30 left. Roger. What is the reported visibility? The reported RVRs are, touchdown 200, mid, 75, and rollout, 75. It is CAT 3 minimums. Okay. With a mid RVR lower than 125 meters, we cannot use the auto land, correct? Yes, our auto land has no rollout capability. In this case let's prepare for an HGS approach. The wind is within the limits, correct? Yes, the wind is calm. By the way, what are the limits for the winds? HGS is more restricted than the auto land, right? Negative Captain. According to the company policy, the limits are the same for both the HGS and the auto land. Headwind 25 knots, crosswind 15 knots, and tailwind 10 knots. You are right. The difference is that the glide slope angle is a little less restrictive for the auto land. From 2.50 degrees to 3.25 degrees, correct? Yes. For the HES it is from 2.51 to 3 degrees. In Dubai, runway 30 left, the angle is 3 degrees, so it's within the limits for us. Right. Do you remember any other restrictions that may affect us? Well, using the HES we can approach and land even with one engine inoperative, using flaps 15. Right. For the auto land we have to land with flaps 30 or 40, and we cannot land with one engine inoperative. Yes Captain. Today I recommend flaps 40 to approach with a lower pitch on final. It may help to identify the approach lights. Sure, let's plan for flaps 40. By the way, the only kind of approach that we can fly with no flap restrictions is the CAT-2, auto-coupled approach. And both engines must be operative. In this case, I would have to keep autopilot engaged until at least 80 feet, but of course, disconnecting it before 50 feet for a manual landing. And the required touchdown RVR would increase from 300 meters to 350 meters. Got it. So even if we cannot extend the flaps to 15, we still can fly a CAT-2 approach. Yes, but today, as it is CAT-3 in Dubai, we would have to divert. Understand, so we could go to Fujairah where the weather is nice. Yes. Captain, if we could use the auto land, is it allowed to also use the HGS together with it? Well, hybrid operation is not allowed, but we may use the HGS to monitor the approach. If the HGS fails or gives any warning, we would not need to discontinue the approach, as long as all the indications for the auto land, including the ILS indications on the PFDs are reasonable. Of course, if we are in doubt, We'd better go around. But if something goes wrong with the auto land, let's say the flare is not armed at 500 feet, may we revert to the HGS? No, in this case the company recommendation is to go around, analyze the situation, and eventually prepare for a new approach using only the HGS. Unless it is an emergency, right? Right. In an emergency the captain always has the discretion to exercise her or his emergency authority. In fact, although an auto land is normally executed by the left seat pilot, in an emergency it can be executed by the right seat pilot as well. Right. Captain, good news. The new ATIS reports touchdown RVR 200, mid RVR, 125, and rollout RVR 75. Great. The mid RVR has increased to 125 meters. So according to the company policy, now we are supposed to use the auto land. We are both auto land certified, the ILS facility is suitable, and according to the OMC, the weather is also within the limits for the runway 30 left. Affirm. Captain, one more thing. 
In case of strong and gusty winds, do we have to adjust the approach speed? As long as we have the auto throttle available and we keep it engaged, we just need to add the standard 5 knots over the reference speed. The auto throttle is designed to properly correct the speed variations. Anyway, it's always good to keep an eye on it. Right. So we just need to make speed adjustments in case we plan to disengage the auto throttle before landing. Yes, or if the auto throttle is not available. We do not need it for the auto land operation. Right. Where can we find the list of equipment required for the low visibility operations? You will find it on Procedures and Policies, Appendix E. Thank you, Captain. Welcome. Thank you for watching.